Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to be talking to you a little bit about the palettes that I would keep if I couldn't keep everything that I picked up this year. If that sounds like something you're interested in, stick with me. We're going to get into it right now. So, COVID-19 definitely threw this entire year for a straight loop. And one of the things that I found really fun to do when I was locked in my house was to go shopping online. And since we're wearing masks that cover from here down, the thing that I was most gravitating towards was eyeshadow palettes. But let's be serious, I was gravitating towards eyeshadow palettes anyway. Me and PayPal went on a fabulous journey this year, let me just tell you. And I'm going to show you a picture of every single palette that I um, picked up this year. And then we're going to talk about if I could only keep 10 of those palettes, what would stay and what would go. Where are my palettes? Okay, so hopefully <laughs> my husband skips this video because he definitely does not need to see how many palettes I picked up this year. But what we're going to do now is talk about of all of those palettes, what are the 10 that I would keep? So the first one I will have to put a picture up because I do not have it in my possession yet, but it is the Shroud Cosmetics and Butte Bean It's Freaking Bats Collab. This palette looked so, so pretty to me, and I think it was one of the most unique color stories that was presented to us throughout the year, and so hands down, this was the collab that I absolutely needed, didn't know I wanted, um, and I can't wait to get my hands on it and start playing around with the shades. The swatches look absolutely stunning on everybody that I've seen this on, um, not just creators, but also um, just regular customers that have posted lots of pictures and looks. I know the collab sold out in like 30 seconds and then the rest of us had to kind of get in line in a pre-order um, which is totally fine with me. I'd rather just pre-order it and know it's already like I'm already in line um, than to have to like wait around and try to capture like a relaunch sale every time it comes out. But anyway so that would be number one. Number two would be this one right here. This is the Makeup a Murder partner in crime palette it came out this was their valentine's day release this year and it was one of the first palettes that i got that i started to play with on my channel if you are brave you can go back and watch those really early videos and yikes but this is what the color story looks like i do think it's really really pretty there's a lot of like really nice purpley shades over here um and then of course pinks and reds i've always been very comfortable playing with and then this black is actually like a black with sparkles in it. The sparkles don't really translate onto the eyes, um, but I do think that makes it look really pretty in the pan. On top of which, this packaging is like next level. You've got like a skeleton hand and a regular hand and handcuffs. You've got blood splatter all over the place. I mean, this is just like, uh, for somebody who loves like crime documentaries, Bailey Sarian, this was my number two I would say is the Violet Boss Sugar Crystals palette. I picked up this palette back in I want to say like February or March and you can see I've used a lot of the shades but um, very lightly. I'm very light handed with my makeup. Um, but I think that the the colors in this one are so pretty and these iridescent colors even though they're not like multi-chromes or anything they just have such a nice like reflective quality to them that I really enjoy using them every time that I play with this palette and then you've got kind of these deeper shades that just they're still icy but they're not quite as icy and then these brights like get out of here with the brights like you just it's a rainbow palette but it's a rainbow palette in a very different way it's more pastel and then you've got these iridescent shades like they just took it in a very different direction and I think that this was I think this is my favorite release that Violet Boss has ever done but I think this was also the most creative release that they've ever done because a lot of the other palettes that they have are like 
warm tone neutrals or neutrals with a pop of blue. So I think this was a great palette. Definitely had to be in my top 10. I need to remember not to swatch everything or we're going to be here for a long time. Okay. The next one to talk about would be the BH Sweet Shop collection. And I pulled this one in particular because I think it's the most um, impactful and my favorite of the four that I purchased. But I purchased um, Cherry on Top, the Bubblegum one, which is the blue one, um, the Pistachio, and then the Orange Sherbet, I think. Um, but the Pistachio one looks like this. I'm sure you guys have already seen this. And I actually forgot to include this in my, like, you don't need another green palette, green palette video. Um, but I really, really like this one. I think this green is so pretty, like emerald green, deep, smoky kind of green, but it's still more cool toned. And then this Sweet Life shade is like a frosty, taupey silver with just like a touch of like chartreuse. It's really, really pretty. It makes an amazing inner corner highlight and an amazing lid shade. The mattes are very blendable in this, so this would definitely, I mean, I would try to sneak in all four of my palettes out of this, but if I can only keep, truly only keep 10 palettes, I would take this one out of that quad of palettes. All right, the next one may come as no surprise to you based on how much I really enjoyed um, Midas Cosmetics this year, but it would be the Midas Cosmetics and Smoky Glow palette. I actually heard about this release in, I want to say like November, December of last year, but did not get a chance to purchase it on the initial launch, so I had to wait until um, the second round of orders came, which was totally fine because they were very upfront in saying they were going to continue to produce the palette until there was no longer any interest, um, which I think is really smart because then people can get it when they can afford to get it and not feel pressured to get it right at the launch because maybe it won't be around next time. But this is the Smoky Glow palette. It is full of beautiful pinky, purpley, brown shades. The shades that I think everybody draws to are Nutty and Leno. Leno is this really cool like metallic purple with sort of a blue flip. And then this is sort of an iridescent white with like a blue to pink duochrome, um, which I think is really pretty. But my absolute favorite shade in this is actually Dofa. And Dofa is this really pretty like chocolate brown, but then it kind of pops to this reflective like burgundy kind of shade. So I think this one is like the, what would you call it? Like the, the secret shade that just knocks everybody out of the park. It's like the, the underdog shade. Um, I think the mattes are really nice. I do think that some of these mattes are very similar. So do you necessarily need all of them? Probably not. Um, but I, I think that the looks that I've put together with this have been really enjoyable. Um, I've really come to enjoy Smoky Glow's channel, who I recently literally discovered right before I discovered this palette. Um, but I, I'm really glad I got a chance to try this palette out, and I do think it's got really good quality, so I would definitely keep this one around. Okay, keeping on that sort of pinky purpley red train. <sighs> I could not do a 10 palettes or less video like this without talking about something from Nabla. Nabla Cosmetics just really blew up in my mind this year. I think they blew up for a lot of people this year. Um, but this is the number 5 cutie palette and it's the Wild Berry one. So you get this like 6 pan palette. You've got this shade over here which is kind of like a pinky orange duochrome. You've got this one here which is like a blue to pink um, on a clear base type duochrome shade. And then Blackberry and Venom and Botanic Juice, these three make such beautiful colors to like smoke out, throw into your crease. You can do an all matte look with this or you could do a look with shimmers. This shade is one of their latex shades. It doesn't have latex in it, um, but it's the finish that they call it. I think it's like a thicker formula. It's a little bit harder to spread. Um, so it's not my favorite formula out of what they have in this palette, but it does still work very nicely. And I think the looks that you can create out of this, it's surprising how many looks you can create out of this being that it's only six pans. Okay. The next one to talk about is Kaleidos Futurism Astro Pink. This is the Futurism number three palette. 
first of all the packaging like get the heck out of here I've never seen prettier packaging in my life when you pop this open you do get a little mirror but then you have all of your shades here the um, the shimmers in this one are some of my favorites so this blue is sort of like a almost like a blue purple duochrome kind of thing it comes across as like the strongest blue um, very similar to the blue in the Manny Eternal Eclipse actually um, this pink color is like this very frosty like silver toned pink shimmer and it looks beautiful on the lid it really will make your lids like just pop um, again this black has some glitter in it I don't see the glitter translate onto the lid when I use this palette and then you've got some really nice shades here that you can do some transition work and a crease with all in all I've been super happy every time I use this palette I feel like I reach for it a lot and it's such a like simple color story but their formula knocks it out of the park the only downside I would say with those palettes is that their shade names are only on the little insert so if you ever get rid of the insert you have no idea what the shades are called okay the next one that I would have to pick out if I could only keep 10 would be the Beauty Bay what is this book of magic palette I have never tried anything from Beauty Bay prior to this palette so this was kind of a, a first step into their formula but this palette is really really nice the shimmers in this one are gorgeous and then you've got these really cool deep mattes. I feel like what I've learned about this year is that I do really enjoy deepening up my look with colorful mattes and I don't have enough colorful mattes in my collection. I feel like my collection is very like light to medium tones and then I kind of fall short on the deeper tones. So when I found this I was in heaven. I was playing so much with this. This blue shade is stunning. This sort of multi, sorry, duochrome shade. Very very pretty. I really like the purple that's here. This silver pops on the lid just beautifully. I haven't played as much with these neutrals. I think I did like one look with those because um, when I <laughs> open up a palette like this, I don't want to play with the neutrals. I want to play with the colorful shades. But I do appreciate the fact that they put those in there because I'm sure not everybody wants to do an all colorful look. Some people might just want to do a pop of color. So you do have that option with this palette. And the fact that it's only I think like 15 bucks, that was, I was surprised. It's pretty decent. Now going along with that, the other, oh my god I almost just dropped it, caught it with my thighs. Um, so the other one that I found that really like opened my eyes to the world of deep dark mattes is the Raw Beauty Christie in Colourpop at Foresight palette. And I know this does have two shimmers in it, I don't really reach for these shimmers, they're nice, um, but I'm not usually going for like gold toned shimmers, but these mattes are wonderful to use. Um, so I've really been reaching into this to kind of augment some of my palettes that hit just more of those light to medium notes and then this kind of finishes off my look. So very very happy that I picked this one up. And then the last one I think I would be so sad if I did not get to keep this one out of my collection. It is the Glam Light Cake Palette. So it comes in this like cutesy little oven and then you pop this open and here's your palette. Originally I was like this packaging is kind of dumb but now I think it's kind of adorable. <laughs> so you do get like a big mirror but these are your shades and it, it has just some really pretty like blues and purples and then the this pink shade is like it's like that pink to gold duochrome that a lot of companies have managed to put out but I think this one they've done such a good job with that I would push to use this one rather than a different brand's um, version. I do really like some of these cooler toned purples that you have here. I think this key lime shade is really really pretty and this mint shade although it says it's called icy mint I think of it more as like a teal and I think it looks so pretty on the eyes. I don't see that kind of a shade put in palettes very often so I think this one is just a really really pretty addition. You can do neutral, you can do colorful. I would definitely want to keep this in my collection. Okay, and with that said, definitely lo let me know in the comments down below what the palettes are that you would definitely keep out of everything that you've tried this year. Maybe, you know, you've tried less palettes, which is probably more normal than what I've done. 
Um, but I definitely want to hear your opinions. What were the absolute like best of the best palettes for you this year? I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'm going to catch you in my next video. Bye!